to me, the way I look at it is this, you know, if all languages, for me, are very wonderful human creations, human achievement, whether it's English, Gujarati, Swahili, Kikuyu, wonderful languages. But the problem has been in a system of oppression and aggression. The languages and cultures are seen as a hierarchy. Some languages say, oh, we are better than another, you, my, we are better than that language, or uh, this culture is better than a uh, higher, not even right. better, higher. Uh, so it's, it's in terms of hierarchy of power relationship between languages. That's what, but, you know, not language, a, a particular language per se. Right, but the way, okay. but I wondered, yeah. you know, whether, that, as you know, uh, the great African writer Chinua Achebe took a very different uh. view. He suggested that uh, uh. it wasn't quite the case that, mm. that you put, but also mm. Ngozi Manda Ndichi, mm. a younger Nigerian writer, right. uh. she says English is my language. She's taken over English, and I just wondered whether your, your views of this were very much of that time, of the 50s and 60s. No. And but the younger, younger African writers take a different English view. English is not an African language, full stop. One can say we adapt it and so on. In Nigeria, there's Yoruba, there's Ivo, in Kenya, there's Kikuyu, there's Luo. Indeed. We have genuine African languages. But Chimamanda you know, Ngozi Ndichi, uh, uh, just to quote uh, her, she says, right. English is mine. I have taken ownership of English. So she's kind of decolonized herself in a different no, way, hasn't she? She's part of the metaphysical empire. That's the whole point. But she's still colonized. Oh, no, no, no. Metaphysical empire is when people now begin to claim, you know, oh, this space is really, you know, mine and so on. And uh, that does not mean that what she does with English and what my son Mokomango does with the English is wonderful. I have, no, I have no doubt that what they are doing with the English language, but they are contributing, but they should not we should not deceive ourselves. We are, when we do that, we are contributing to the expansion and deepening of English language, not Yoruba or Kikuyu right. or Kiswahili but, but and you, so on. Well, but there's a couple <laughs> of points to that. Uh, 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 one is you translate your own works. Right into English. So isn't that contributing to... No. Because, because you could get somebody else to do it. Because translation is a very, very important process, how languages and cultures, you know, communicate, okay? Uh, look at the contribution of translations to the rise of uh, European literatures and languages. From Latin, remember the 17th century, in Translation was very important to the rise of European languages. But you know. for you, even Shakespeare could yeah. not have happened. It happened in the context of translation. But Gikuyu yeah. is, mm -hmm. is, for all its strengths and for all its importance in mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. means that you've got a very, very limited market of people who will ever read your work. Whereas mm -hmm. if you translate into English, you can be read broadly around the world. And oh. you do it yourself yes. rather than get somebody else it's to a, do it. It's a fallacy. I mean, there's a notion that you write in English, you get. Oh, well, what, you I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is this. You can write in Zulu and the work can be translated into English, into French and so on. Let me ask you this. And the question I always ask people is this, you know, can you or anybody else imagine French literature in Zulu? You know, where you say, oh, this is French literature, but really it's written in Zulu, you know. Or where, and do you know what's happening right now? There are very many prizes right now given to African literature. But do you know the condition? Written in they English. They don't write in. So yeah, we're going right. to promote African literature what? on condition that you don't use an African language. Right. This is crazy. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, I. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, talk, a, let's, let's talk a little bit. Can about you think of English literature in Chinese? You say, oh, we well, don't want. We are promoting English literature, but it must be written in Chinese. Uh, but I can think of Robert Burns, who <laughs> right, writes an right. old Scottish, which yeah. nobody reads because right, it's not right. written in the English that most people well, understand. But let, yeah. let's, let, right. let, let's move on to, to, right. to, to Kenya now and, and mm. how you think of the country. Mm. I mean, do you think after all these struggles, mm. Mm -hmm. uh, the struggles that you, your family went through and mm. so on, the country's a disappointment? Not really. You know, the way I look at it is look at where Kenya, where Africa has come from, really. And when we think of where Africa, where is Kenya or other parts of Africa, we have, we have gone through 
the death from which we have come. You know, if you think what, how much Africa, the entire African resources, entire human bodies of Africa have contributed to the making say, of London, of all the European cities, and so on, you know. It's incredible we are even where we are.